my heart is yearning and so angry. So with the joy of the Lord, I want us to be upstanding as we receive the man of God, the apostle and prophet, a Akama, uh, to come and bring to us the word of the Lord. Pigia Yesu makofi ya Jew, makofi anguvu.
something that they, this church wanted to do, to do it, the business incubation, to help young people to begin to start business. I have no idea. Huh? But God is going to use this. Uh, this. God is going to begin to raise a lot of, God is going to put finances in the hands of the people here. Is that okay? He's going to put what? Finances in the hands of the people here. There's going to be something to, 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 there's going to be a big thing in people's homes to do with the fish ponds. A lot of homes around here will be doing, instead of having swimming pools, they'll be having what? Fish ponds. Is that okay? In, inside the home. You, I'm a prophet now. Please don't expect me to behave like a pastor. It is the stuff of your your uh, father is an apostle. I'm, I'm, I'm a prophet. I must do prophet things. Is that okay? A lot of homes here are going to develop inside the home. What? Fish ponds. Fish ponds. There's going to be a very big um, underground fish industry here. The man of God said the heavens are open. He was right. They actually open. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Are you listening to me? So tonight I want to teach a little. Then we are going to pray. Tomorrow, we are, doing, we are having a deliverance session. What must we have tomorrow? A deliverance session. Can we have that? Did you call somebody to attend the service today? If you didn't call somebody, you are doing people a disservice. So yesterday, we began to talk um, a few things about altars. Because we want to break the spirit of witchcraft. What do you want to do? We want to break the stronghold of witchcraft from our lives individually and from the area generally. Is that fine? But to deal with witchcraft, you must have some um, working understanding of how altars operate because witch witchcraft use altars for their functionality. Is that okay? This side, is that fine? Uh -huh. Over to me. We have not quarreled. Now, I want to go through some characteristics of um, or um, principles of uh, altars, how they work. Then we shall begin um, the prayers that we shall conclude tomorrow. Um, number one, like I said yesterday, altars are, are um, instituted or commissioned by men. It is not God who initiates an altar. It's a man. God has given men the, the responsibility or the privilege 
of initiating an altar so that man and God can communicate through that altar. The person who's responsible for that altar is called the oracle of the altar. It's called what? The oracle of such an altar. Like your priest here, the, the man of God, is the oracle of this altar. He's the one who speaks for God here at this altar. So here. But every altar also has a supervising spirit. Has a what? So in this, from the spirit world, there's a supervising spirit. From the man world, there's the oracle of the altar. And the two of them combine together to make that altar function. When it concerns the altars of God, the supervising spirit is the Holy Spirit. So God is a spirit and God functions really like every other spirit except that God's spirit is holy. So here. God's spirit is what? And God's spirit is above every other spirit. But in functionality and in characteristics, God's spirit functions like any other spirit. It needs an altar. It needs an oracle of an altar. It follows the laws of the, the spirit world. Like I told you, one of the laws of the spirit world is that the spirit world is a legal world. It's what? It says a legal world. Being a legal world, in fact, um, if you check, uh, really, the Bible is not really a religious book. It's a legal book. It's what? It's a legal book. It's, that's why it's called the Old Testament and the New Testament. The word testament is a will. The word testament is not a religious word. It's a legal word. You find it in legal circles. It's what a lawyer writes. It was a person writes before he dies. When a person, when a person has gathered wealth and they, before they die, they write what they call will and a testament. They write the last will and testament. So the word testament is not really a religious word. We make it religious, but it's a legal word. It's found in legal circles. They are here. They are here. The word testament is found in? Legal circle. Faith, the Bible calls faith evidence. Is that okay? The word evidence is not found in religious circles. Where is it found? In legal circles. The Bible says faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Faith is what? Where do you, take, where do you find evidence? In courtroom. You don't find evidence in church. Where do you, where do you find the word evidence? In courtroom. So this word evidence is a legal word. So faith is a legal transaction. Is that okay? Prayer is a, is a legal transaction. Prayer is what a lawyer carries when they are going before God. They carry two things, prayer and petition. So when they go before a judge, they say, Your Honor, we have three prayers. So prayer is not a religious activity. It's a legal Good evening. Say prayer. It's a legal activity. It, is, it, it happens in court. Even now, if you go to court, the, your lawyer will present to the judge what? Prayers. Your honor, we have the following prayers. So prayer is not something religious. It's a legal thing. Is that okay? Uh, this is why the judges are called my lord because they sit in place of God. The judges take the title my lord. Why? They are sitting in the place of, in the seat of God. They are, they are mimicking what happens in heaven. You are okay? Okay. So altars are instituted by man, the oracle of the altar, and uh, there's a supervising spirit of that altar. So if you are to deal with that altar, you must deal with several things. One, you must deal with, the, first of all, the edicts that have come out of that altar. Because the oracle of the altar pronounces edicts, pronounces verdicts, pronounces judgments that the altar backs up. Is that okay? So any altar that is working against you, you, are, you first, the first thing you deal with is the verdict or the edict or the, pron the, the pronouncements that have come out of that altar. Is that okay? Um, deliverance really is not necessarily kugaragaza. 
Deliverance is not necessarily Kugaragaza. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 9, the second part says, The righteous through knowledge shall be delivered. The righteous through knowledge. Real deliverance comes when knowledge has entered your head. It is possible, Kugaragaza, and you don't have knowledge and no deliverance takes place. Proverbs 11, 9 says, The hypocrite with his mouth destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge the righteous will be delivered. So it is possible to sit and nothing happens physically to you, but knowledge has entered your head. Deliverance has taken place. Is that okay? Is that fine? Just like the word repent does not necessarily mean come to the altar, cry a lot of tears. It is possible to do that and not repent because repent means change your mind and direction. If you cry a lot and do all those things and you have not changed your mind, no repentance has taken place. It is possible to sit and be smiling and have, get new information, get new revelation and change the way you think and repentance will have taken place and nobody even noticed that you repented. They are here. So a lot of deliverance will start now before even you pray tomorrow because knowledge is entering and people are being delivered through knowledge. They are here. So when you are dealing with an altar, let's say an altar of witchcraft, you must deal with the edicts or the pronunciation or the words that have been proclaimed from that altar. But after you have done that, you must deal with the oracle of that altar. Because if you don't deal with the oracle, you will just pronounce some more words. Is that okay? So you must deal with what? The words, number one. Number two, you must deal with the oracle of the altar. Number three, you must deal with the supervising spirit. Number four, you must destroy the altar itself. Because if you don't destroy the altar itself, even if the oracle dies and the altar is alive, it, it can attract more supervising spirits. Say, so I hear. So it is not enough to reverse the words. It's not enough to say, return to sender. Okay. But if you return to sender and the sender is still there, just return them back. You must make sure there's no sender. Say, so I hear. You must make sure there's no sent, there's no sender, and there's no spirit that is backing the sender. That's why before we pray, you must have some understanding of how altars work so that when we are praying, you know what you are doing. Hallelujah. Altars have rituals. What do they have? Rituals. I think the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 10 or something says, you must not be fooled by eating food, ritualistic eating. Altars have rituals. Rituals mean things that are done over and over again. The power of an altar depends on two things. One, the dedication of the oracle, the commitment of the oracle to that altar, and number two, the sacrifice that the oracle has put on the altar. So continuous obedience of the oracle raises the power or the, the, the strength of that altar. Lack of attending of the altar brings down, reduces the strength of the altar. Jesus Christ died and resurrected so that not only special people can raise altar, everybody now can raise an altar because everybody is a priest. So here. If you are a priest, you can raise an altar unto God. Do not be carried about by different and varied and alien teachings, for it is good for the heart to be established and enabled and strengthened by means of grace, God's favor and spiritual blessing, and not be devoted to foods or rules and diets and ritualistic meals, which bring no spiritual benefit or profit those who observe them. This tells us that altars have rituals. So if you see altars have rituals or patterns, so if you see a pattern in your life, especially if it's an evil pattern, you can deduce, even if you are not prophetic, that there's an altar behind it. There's no pattern that is self-perpetuating. 
There must be a supervising spirit behind it that keeps this pattern alive. So this altar eats. Altars normally eat the ritual. Altars have food that they must eat. Is that okay? So it reaches a certain time that the altar wants to eat and it must call and you sit somewhere and you really feel, I must do this, I must do this. Then after you have done it and the altar is sitting, the altar relaxes and then you feel so bad. Why did I do that again? Why did I go and drink again? Why did I go and smoke again? When I had made a resolution, I'm not going to eat because the altar needed to eat and that's the ritual of the altar. That's the food and you gave it to it. You understand? So every, if you see a pattern or an addiction, something you, you are compelled to do, the thing that is compelling you is the supervising spirit behind that altar. He tells you it's time for the altar to eat. It's time for the altar to eat. But because you are bound to that altar, you try to resist, you can't. Unless you're freed from the altar. So patterns in life, that's why I don't encourage people to get tattoos. Because you realize people don't just get one tattoo. When you get a tattoo, it becomes a habit. The tattoo calls another tattoo. And it calls another tattoo. And it calls another tattoo. Until you find your whole body is now covered with this thing. The thing is painful. But you must, the thing, you, you are compelled to go and get another one. So here. An altar, uh, an oracle of an altar, the more they attend to the altar, the more the oracle of the altar begins to look, as, to look like the supervising spirit. So the more you go before God, the more you begin to look like God. The more the person who attends the evil altar attends that, the more they look like the spirit behind that altar. Because the altar serves to bind into one the spiritual world and the natural world. I'm trying to move pole pole. Say I hear. Say I understand. Okay. I'm going to say a point here. A righteous altar and an evil altar cannot exist together without fighting. Spiritual warfare takes place when a righteous altar and an evil altar and put, are put side by side. A righteous altar and an evil altar cannot coexist peacefully. They cannot cohabit. So any time a righteous altar is put side by side by a, with an evil altar, there'll be warfare. And it is the... This is why the Bible says, do not be unequally yoked. Do not be what? So you, this boyfriend was very nice until you married him. When you married him, now you joined, you put side by side an evil altar because inside him there's an altar that lays, there's nobody who's innocent. Every person, you are bowing to something. You are bowing. So long as you have blood, you are bowing, there's an altar that claims because that blood, you are not the first of your name. That blood has a lineage. Is that okay? That blood has what? And that lineage has things laying claim to it. So this man is okay until the day you go before God and say, I do, and you are joined together. Then the altar within him realizes, now I'm put beside a righteous altar, and they begin to fight. Then you but you used to be okay. Until the day we got married, now the man just, he doesn't know why he's getting angry. You don't know, this woman is just, suddenly just developed a temper. What happened? The altar within them is fighting the righteous altar. The Bible says, the Philistine took the Ark of the Covenant 
and put the ark of the covenant beside Dagon and left it overnight. When they came the following day, they found warfare. The ark of the covenant made the ark of Dagon fall on its face. And they thought, ah, maybe it was a mishap, it was an accident. So they put it back again. Then God got angry. God sliced off the head of that and the arms and remained only the torso. Why? Righteous altar and evil altar cannot. There will be warfare. That's why you enter a place. The moment they employ you, somebody just starts fighting you. You wonder, what did I do to this person? I'm not even under them. The, the, the boss of that other department, they are into your business. They are reporting things. They are, they, they, even them, they don't know. It's because whatever altar they are carrying is seeing your altar and you cannot coexist. One has to go. One has to be swallowed and it shall not be you in the name of Jesus. I said it shall not be you in the name of Jesus. I said it shall not be you in the name of Jesus. I said it shall not be you in the name of Jesus. So when the Philistines, 1 Samuel chapter 5 verse 2, when the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. Verse 3. And when the people of Ashdod rose early in the morning, there was Dagon fallen on its face to the ark before the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and set it in its place again. And when they rose early next morning, there was Dagon fallen on his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. The head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were broken off in the threshold. Only Dagon's torso was left of it. Anytime there's a righteous altar and an evil altar, there's spiritual warfare. Now, the evil altar and the righteous altar do not have to be in the people who are facing each other. Sometimes that altar, you are carrying it because of your family, not you. So before you marry someone, you must go through a process where your lineage is cleansed. Is that okay? Because of your family name, I, I told you names can transfer characteristics. Is that okay? So you are carrying some name and that name carries altars. You have gone and joined with another person whose name is carrying a godly altars. And these altars now start fighting. So you are doing well until the day you got married. Have you seen those people? They had a big business until they married some woman. They came from up and now they have nothing. It's because the day they joined this lady, that altar started eating that well. Say, so here. So Jesus Christ came and died and resurrected so that every handwriting that is against you can be blotted out by the blood of Jesus. One last point. In any spiritual warfare, it is the altar, it is the superior altar that will carry the day. Regardless of whether it is evil or good. Let me repeat that. In any spiritual warfare, you know Christians like to delude themselves. I'm a Christian. I will win this war. <laughs> it is not a guarantee. In any spiritual warfare, it is the higher altar that will carry the day regardless of whether that altar is good or evil. If the evil altar is higher than the good altar, the evil altar will win. <laughs> we have a story in the Bible of the king of Moab. Say the king of Moab. The king of Moab came to fight against the children of Israel. And they went to the children of Israel, went to the prophet of the Lord and asked, what is the Lord saying? Will we win this war? The prophet of the Lord said, go and pursue them. You will win this war. That said the Lord. So the Lord spoke and gave them assurance 
that they are going to win the war. And truly, they were winning the war. The Bible says they pushed them and they fought Moab and drove them to their border. And the Bible says, and the king took 600 of, the, of his best soldiers when he was surrounded and tried to break through the army of Israel and he failed. So the whole of his army had been decimated. Am I talking? Then the king understood altars. The Bible says he took his son, the one who was supposed to be heir after him, and he sacrificed him upon the wall. This is 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 27. The Bible says, Then he took his eldest son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him as a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel. So they departed from him and returned to their own land. So what his army could not do, what his best soldiers could not do, one sacrifice upon the altar defeated a whole army. Even though the children of Israel had the word of the Lord, one evil king raised an altar that negated what the Almighty God had said. So it is not a given that in any spiritual war you are going to win just because you are a Christian. If the, evil, if the evil you are facing is more dedicated to their altar, if the priesthood of that evil is, more, is higher than your own priesthood, you will be killed with your salvation. That's why it is before you engage, you know there are some believers, no, no divination against Israel. No witchcraft. Then they go to one shrine at Kayabombo. I tear this thing down. I tear, when you come out of there, cancer has hit you. You will not last two years. And you will die because you, en you went to engage an altar that is higher than you. And when you engage an altar that is higher than you, you have broken the law of altars and the devil can accuse you before God and God will allow the devil to slaughter you. It's true. You have broken the law of altars. You can't engage a rank that is above you. Say the spirit world is a world of ranks. Say the spirit world is a world of ranks. Listen. The Bible says, when Michael was contending with the devil over the body of Moses, he didn't engage him. He told him, the Lord rebuke you. Because he, he was below, he was not his level. He couldn't engage. He understood his rank. Am I talking? The Lord, when Adam and Eve were chased out of the Garden of Eden, the Bible says the Lord put cherubs to guard the garden. Why? Because the devil was a cherub. He could not put archangels. The devil would have walked in and out the way he wants. He has to put the one of the same rank. It is only Christians who don't understand ranks. So before you engage, first of all, find out what is the prophet Elijah. Before you engage Jezebel, the Lord told him, if I, if I said there'll be famine, the Lord told him, go fast by the, book of, the brook of Kidron. I will feed you. The Lord started building his rank. Because if he had gone to Jezebel the way he was, Jezebel would have slaughtered him. Man. So the Lord built his rank, kept him in a brook somewhere. Then the Lord sent him to Sidon to go and see the, the widow. Sidon is the birthplace of Jezebel. 
Say, go and build your rank there. After you're done, then now he came and killed all the priests of Baal. But not before. He had to build himself first to reach the same rank. And you still find, even though Elijah built himself, Jezeb, that, that spirit waited for him. And, and waited, and waited, and waited. Years later, when somebody called John the Baptist, Jesus said, this one is the Elijah. That spirit rose again. They say, this is the, the second half of the war. You won the first one. This is the second half of the war. The, the, the threat of Jezebel, they said, I will cut off your head. Years later, another Jezebel arose. And another Elijah arose. This second Elijah did not have his covering. He, he despised his covering. And had his head cut off. Am I talking? This is why when God sees that you are trying to, the problem you're facing is greater than the level of your priesthood. God allows you to borrow altars. So God will send you to another. So when you have a problem, God will send you, go and see so and so. Take an offering, take to so and so. Why? Go and get connected to that altar. Then your problem will be solved. Am I talking? Or God directs your father to organize a conference like this where you can borrow an altar. So if you get a testimony now, it's not because your altar has gone up. It's because you have borrowed my altar. I open your life in the name of Jesus. Let your life open in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your life open in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your life open up in the name of Jesus. By this time next week, I decree as a prophet of Jehovah. Let your testimony enter your hand in the precious name of Jesus. Let every machinations and technology of the enemy that is preventing your testimony, let it be quashed by the glory of Jehovah, by the anointing of God. In the precious name of Jesus, I command your feet to begin to gather speed. I command your life to begin to open up. I command the angels of the Lord to enter into your life. Intervene in every situation. In the precious name of Jesus. So God allows you to connect to an altar that you did not build. God graces other people and sends them to you. So your father and mother of the house have been graced and they have been sent to you so that the situation that is beyond your altar, their altar will destroy for you. The Bible puts it like this. He who escapes the, the sword of Elijah, the sword of Jehu will slay. Who escapes the sword of Jehu? Am I talking? So tonight, we want to approve the altars. 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 We want to approve the, the, the altars. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. First Kings 19, 17 says, It shall be that whoever escapes the sword of Hezekiah, Jehu will kill. Whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. So whatever has escaped the grace of your father, the grace of your mother will kill. Whatever has escaped the grace of your mother, the grace of Prophet Akama will kill. Either way, you are going free for free. You are carrying your testimony in the precious name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Your testimony is appearing in seven days in the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. So, how do we overthrow? How do we approach these altars? I'll begin this.
this, then we'll finish this tomorrow. I told you, evil altars work mainly in two ways. One, by using a point of contact. Say point of contact. Say point of contact. So they use a point of contact using the principle of identification. So they take a point of contact, they identify that thing with you. So for all intents and purposes, that thing becomes you. The thing does what? Becomes you. Wanaenda wanachukua picha yako, ama inawea, ama sidiria. What is sidiria? It is in my head, eh? Kamis. Nachukua nini? Oh, sidiria is not kamis. It, it is the other one. Yesu ni buwana. So, ukienda pale kwa hile kwa yala madhabahu wana kutuma. Western Kenya kuna kitu inaitua kuokota step. Step inaitua nini? Mgu. Kuokota mgu. Kuokota nyayo. Wanaokota nini? These things are not a joke. If you don't have sufficient priesthood within yourself or sufficient priesthood covering Migu yako itaokotwa, nyayo itaokotwa, na itaoto, ita oko, oko, okoteka. <laughs> itaokotwa, na itaokote. It will, it will, uh, it will be, it will okoteka uh, itself. It will bite itself together. Kitaumana. Is that okay? This one is important to first of all be under spiritual covering is that okay and number two while you're under spiritual covering at the time the spiritual covering gives you begin to build up your own priesthood before the lord rise up in the rank so here your spiritual ranking must be high is that okay so wakichukwai they identify this thing with you. Have you seen those Nigerian movies where they take some banana thing that looks like a doll? Then they begin to speak to it. See, you have seen this thing. Wanachukua kitu kama ka doll, ka banana skin, wanaanza kuyongelesha. Wanachukua needle, wanwa idunga. Is that true? Like, waki idunga, mtu huko legos. Ah! Kuna ka remote control. Katika ulimwengu wa kiroho, kuna soko ya magonjwa. There's a market for diseases. People buy diseases. Watu ununua nini? Magonjwa. Kuna mtu anaweza kuaenda ya kununulie kansa. Alafu ana, ana specify where it is to be delivered. Anaonyesha picha yako deliver hii kansa kwa huyu. Na kweli wakiangalia wanaona hauna priesthood, hauna covering uko tu fuande, ulipoa pasta ukakosana na e, ukasema hata huyo sipendi vilana smile, hata na shirab, hata si, mimi sipendi hata watu wa Kiambu. Haya. Sasa uko open. Wanakuja wanaweka delivery pa Kuna watu wananunduliwa umaskini. Is that okay? Na wana deliver kwenyo. Kuna kitu na tutadiri nae kesho, inaitua veil. Inaitua nini? Veil ni kama ili ya wa islamu. Is that okay? Sasa kuiyo inanunduliwangwa. Mutu ananunua iyo, anakuja kwa biashara yako, anasema isprediwe hapo. Sasa watu hawaoni biashara iko hapo kanisa yako iko hapo lakini watu hawaoni imefunikwa na nini na veil Wewe ni msichana lakini wamekufunika uso watu wakikuangalia wana, wanaona mwanaume wanaona <laughs> mtu mtu <laughs> our magoons <laughs> na wewe ni mtu a very pretty girl hiyo veil yako Veil wamekuweka kwa uso wameandika hapa goon. 
Sasa wewe unatembea lakini watu wanaona nini? Goon. Sasa kuna veil. Biblia inasema I think the book of Ezekiel prophesy against sorcerers who go and buy veils to come and take the life of the people who should be kept alive and keeping alive those who should die. Sasa wanaenda wananunua nini? Wana deliver kwako. Kuna wengine wananunua smoke. Wananunua nini? Wanaweka <coughs> Tuliona jana <coughs> kila jina iko na vitu mbili. Iko na anointing na iko na fragrance. Sasa jina yako kwa kiroho inatoa perfume. Jina inatoa nini? Maombi yako hayafiki mbinguni kama sound. Yanafika kama nini? Yanafika kama incense. Binguni maombi yanafika kama nini? Incense. The Bible says these are the incense that are the prayers of the saints. Hapa ndio wakatoliki walipata ile kitu ya kuweka lakini haifai iwe natural incense inakuwa ni prayer ndio inakufa binguni kama nini incense sasa mtu akitaka prayer yako isiwe na majibu anaweka uvundo hapo anaenda ananunua ya kunuka anaweka pale sasa ikifika juu inanuka amen we must deal with these things i say we must deal with these things I said you must deal with these things. I said you must deal with these things in the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Revelation 5:8 said, "Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and a golden bowls full of what? Incense. What are these incense? The prayers of the saints." Sasa maombi yako yakifika mbinguni si sauti. In fact, katika uwepo wa Bwana hakuna sauti pale yako sauti yenye iko pale ni adamu sauti yenye iko pale kwa Mungu ni ya nini ya damu na si damu yako ni damu ya nani ya Yesu ndio inaongea pale it is the blood the bible says when you come to mount zion you come to many things among the things you come to is the the the, the sprinkling of blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Okay. How do we Are you learning something? Wave at me, wave at me. If you are bored say amen. Ah, ni mapata. Ah, coach. I've got you. Mm. La kisa bada ya nos. Pote dala. No me sama men na saik mingi. In first Kings, I think chapter 13. Verse one said that there was a man of God. Feel anointing. Damas lazagadina. I must pray for you for your spiritual gifts to be activated. Is that okay? For the spiritual gifts to be done, what? Activated, so that you can see angels. Would you like to see angels? Ah. Wow. First Kings chapter 13 verse 1 says and behold a man of God went from Judah to Bethel by the word of the Lord and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense next verse and he cried out against the altar by the word of the Lord and said oh altar altar that said the Lord So the altar can hear. 
An altar can do what? An altar can hear. Today we must tell your altar something. Any altar against you, if it's to be uprooted, there must be a man of God coming from Bethel. Bethel means the house of God, the house of bread. And a man of God has come, carrying by the word of the Lord, to come and cry out against that altar and call it and say, O oh, altar, O oh, altar, listen to the word of the Lord. You see, one of the things we must do is to erase. The Bible says the blood of Jesus blots out every handwriting that was against you. Is that okay? Now, where are those handwritings? One of the places where the handwriting is, is the soil. Where's the handwriting? The Bible says, O earth, O earth, write concerning this man that he was childless and not prosperous. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Now, what Jesus did on the cross must be made real in your life. And it is made real in your life when there's somebody who stands up and say, let that become real in your life now. In the name of Jesus. So the fact that Jesus did it doesn't mean it will jump on you automatically. Lazima kuwe na priest. Lazima kuwe na ofisi yenye nasimama. Yenye nasema chenye yesu alifanya. Sasa kiwe kibaishani mwako iwe real kwako. It must become flesh in you. It must be downloaded from the spirit and enforced by force, by the power of the Holy Spirit into your life in Jesus' name. That is what I'm here to do tonight. So the Bible says, O earth, O earth, make a record, write concerning this man that he was childless, he was not, he was not prosperous. Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 29 says, let's read it together. One, two, three. I don't think, I don't like the way you're reading. Hold your ear like Nigerian do. Say, how many times have I called you? Say, one, two, three. Now imagine this is the record concerning you from your home. The earth of your home. Imagine zikuna e record. They have written this concerning you. Na weo kuna Nairobi unajaribu ku prosper. Unajaribu biashara, umeregister kampuni, umefanya nini, unatafuta tenda, unatafuta job, unatafuta nini. Every time wanaka wa ku discuss wewe, record yako ikiletwa. Kwa sababu, judgment, the book of Daniel chapter 7 says, the ancient of days sat down and to proclaim judgment, the courts of heaven were convened and books were opened. Sasa judgment ikiwa, ikija, vitabu zinafunguliwa. Vitabu za records. Sasa record yako ikifunguliwa inapatikana hii. Discussion yako ikija. Record yako iletwe. Earth in our we can record Ghani. In a fungo vitabuzo kirapata. This man is listed down as childless. A man who shall not prosper in his days. None of his descendants shall prosper. None of them shall. Ah. God say, judgment, record, bam. The evidence we have. This is not a prosperous person. Go back. Ndiyo unapata vitu kama failure at the edge of. You share, you share experience here. Sasa, sazili unaenda kusucceed. When the judgment is supposed to be in your, on your favor, wakitisha record, inakuwa kitu kama hii. Alafu napata deal yenye likuwa shua, iko snatched. Because one record spoke somewhere, and you don't know the record. And because you are ignorant, you are perishing because of lack of knowledge. Yes, Jesus died, resurrected, 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father, na ameweka provision ya damu yenye inaweza erase your record. Say here. Say I understand. So you struggle with work, you struggle with promotion, you struggle with ministry, you struggle with getting children. Umeolewa miaka sita mnafanya kazi usiku na mchana. Nothing to show. Mada iniro anakuliza kwani? Tulewa mwanaume. Na vya na jaribu hata mimi si hata sitaki hata na mimi nataka. Kwani tu a, nini hatuja kupatia? Anti zako anakuliza kwa sababu anaona miaka inasonga. Na hata hakuna mtu hata anakuambia hello. Unaweka picha Facebook yote. Ukiweka ya maandamano unapata 200 likes. Ukiweka yako unapata 15. <laughs> na yuko comment unakwambia aenda gym. Hakuna mtu ako interested. Kwa nini record inaongea? Today the blood of Jesus erases this record. There's a man who has come from the house of God, who has come from Bethel by the word of God, who has come to cry against the altar. Say, "Oh altar, you altar, oh altar, I command you to be brought down in the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Let that altar split into two. Let the ashes upon that altar be poured out in the name of Jesus. Let's stand up, let's stand up, let's stand up wherever we are. Because of time. Begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. So we want to start this delivery session, but we shall continue it tomorrow. I want you to call people. Let people know that God is doing great things here in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lift your right hand of fire. Say, My Father in heaven. Say, My Father in heaven. My Father in heaven. As I begin to pray now. As I begin to pray now. Let the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus. Blot out every iniquity in my life. Blot out every iniquity in my life. I repent of every sin. I repent of every sin. I repent of every idol I'm holding in my heart. I repent of every idol. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. As the east is far from the west. As the east is far from the west. I ask you to remove my sin from me. I ask you to remove my sin from me. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of I Jesus. Receive I receive forgiveness. I receive forgiveness. I receive forgiveness. I receive forgiveness. I receive the blotting out of sin. I receive the blotting the out of sin. Of in the mighty name of Jesus. Listen. The Bible says, who can come into the holy hill of the Lord? But he who has a clean hand, whose hands are clean. Even there's a maxim of law that says, he who comes to equity must come with clean. So you cannot go to blot, to remove altars if you yourself are part of it. You must separate yourself by repentance. Say here. I hear. You must separate yourself by? Repentance. So you must forgive people. You must ask God to forgive you. You must prepare your heart for war. That's why I don't want to do the whole of this now. Because I want to give you tonight to go and prepare your heart for war tomorrow. Because war has backlash. War has what? Backlash. Jesus said, the enemy comes, but he has nothing in me. 
So we don't want him to come and find jealousy and to find bitterness, to find gossip, to find stuff in you. Is that okay? Yes. So that when you're fighting, God is on your side. God is on? God is on? Say, Father, I repent. Father, I repent. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Forgive me. Forgive me. Of every sin. Of every sin. That I have committed. That I have committed. I release them. I release, I release this sin. I release this out sin. Out of my life. Out of my life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Whatever, Whatever has caused me to sin. Whatever has caused me to sin. I release it out of my life. I release it out of In my life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the of name of Jesus Christ. Of I come Nazareth. under the blood of Jesus. I come under the blood Your of Jesus. Your word says. Your word says. If I confess my sin. If I confess my sin. You are and just. You are faithful and just. You will forgive me from all sin. You will forgive me from all sin. And release me from all unrighteousness. And forgive me of all unrighteousness. I ask you now. I ask you now. Remove all unrighteousness from me. Remove all unrighteousness from me. Holy Spirit of the Living God. Holy Spirit of the Living God. Fill me afresh. Fill me afresh. With your power. With your power. With your presence. With your presence. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Begin to open your mouth and to pray. Repasi katana baba zode de pratia rakaso chadana baba sena rebase karie zede de pra baba darie zede de pro rebaba baba zoka raba baba sana ira baba baba sheka ria zodo no bodo rie zede de bo rebaba baba baba shaka raba baba zede de bo rebasi katana baba zede de bo rebaka katana baba baba zede de bo rebada na dosi ana baba baba kasina rebase katana baba baba zede de bo rebasi kara baba baba rasa katana baba 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 Rakosia da la baba baba shele de bora de de bora Rakosia da la baba baba shele de bora de bora Rakosia da la baba 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 shele de bora From tonight People are going to begin to receive long standing testimonies Amen In the name of Jesus Amen Are you listening to me? Yes sir I said from tonight Long standing Testimonies that had been pending they are going to be released tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. There's a prophet. The Bible says one of the prophets, one of the king's hands, they struck Jeremiah. And Jeremiah told him, this is the name that the Lord calls you. From today, the Lord calls you disaster. Your name you carry can be changed if you carry an evil name it can be changed to good so that the blessing of the Lord come to you I want to deal with the names now before I go then we'll deal with the other altars tomorrow is that okay? Yes. some people when they want your blessing to stop they go to the spirit realm and give you an evil name the world is wicked they give you what? Evil name. They give you an evil name, and that evil name now blocks everything that comes to you. Yet, your promotion in the spirit, your ranking in the spirit, is the ranking of your name. Your ranking is what? Is how much how much anointing that your name invoke? Say so here. I hear. Even Jesus, the reward God gave him was what? A name. a name. Because of his obedience, the Bible says God gave him a name. It's just that his name is above all names. The promotion of God in heaven is a name. And if somebody wants to block your rising, what do they block? Your name. The Bible says a good name is better than silver or gold. So a good name is currency. A good name is what? Currency. You can buy things with it. It buys you things. It is more powerful currency than the currency we know. That's why God gives it to you. He says, whoever overcomes, I will give a white stone. And on that white stone is written a new name that only him and me know. When God wants to reward you, he does something to your name. When people want to block you, they do something to your name. Say, my father in heaven. My father in heaven. 
by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. Let my name be cleansed now. Let my name be cleansed now. I align my name. I align my I name. I align my natural name. I align my natural with name. With the spiritual name that the Lord has given with me. With the spiritual name that the Lord has given me. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Say, Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I disconnect my name. I disconnect my from name. From my natural lineage. From my natural lineage. And I connect my name. And I connect my to name. The name of to the to the lineage of Melchizedek to the lineage of Melchizedek I am a priest I am a priest after the order of Melchizedek say I am a priest I am a priest after the order after the order of Melchizedek of Melchizedek I align my name I align my name with the order of Melchizedek in the order of Melchizedek whatever I had inherited whatever I've inherited through my natural name through my natural I name I reject it now I reject it now by the blood of Jesus by the blood of Jesus I reject it now I reject it now by the blood of Jesus by the blood of Jesus I reject it now by the blood of Jesus by the blood of Jesus my natural name has bestowed on my life whatever my natural your name has bestowed on my through life inheritance. through inheritance I reject it now I reject it now I, re I revoke it now I revoke it now in the precious name in of the Jesus. precious name of Jesus I turn every curse I turn every curse following my natural following name my natural into name into blessing now into blessing now my generation is the blessed generation my generation is a blessed generation in the precious name of Jesus I call my generation blessed 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 I call my generation I call blessed. My generation I call blessed. my generation blessed. I call my generation in the blessed. Precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Say, whoever had turned my name. Whoever had turned my name. And given me an evil name. And given me an evil I name. I reject that evil name I now. I reject that evil name now. By the power of the blood of by Jesus. By the power of the blood of I Jesus. the power of that evil I name. I revoke the power of that in evil name. In the name of Jesus. 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 Listen. I want you to confess this. Say, whoever is trying to locate me in the spirit. Whoever is trying to locate me in the spirit. Using my name. Using my name. I'm now under the name of Melchizedek. I'm now under the name of Melchizedek. Who has no genealogy. Who has no genealogy. Who has no father. Who has no father. Who has no mother. Who has no mother. I have no family tree. I have no family tree. My family tree is Melchizedek. My family tree is Melchizedek. No priest can locate me. No priest can no locate me. No sorcerer can locate me. No sorcerer can locate me. In the mighty me. name of Jesus. In the mighty Jesus. name of Jesus. I hide my name. I hide my name. Under the name of Melchizedek. Under the name of Melchizedek. In the name of Jesus. In the precious name of any Jesus. Handwriting, any handwriting. Any record. Any record. That has my name on it. That has my name on it. That is on the earth anywhere. That is on the earth anywhere. I blot it out by the I blood of Jesus. I blot it out by the blood of Jesus. I blot it out by the blood of Jesus. I blot it out by the blood of Jesus. Any record. Any record. That is that has my name on it. That has that has my name on it. In the water. In the water. I blot it out by the blood I of Jesus. I blot it out in the blood of Jesus. Listen, the Bible says, and these three bear record on the earth. Yes. The water, the blood, and the spirit. Am I talking? Yes, So sir. you have records in the water. Any evil record concerning you in the water, let the blood of Jesus erase it. I receive. Any evil record concerning you in your blood, let oh, yes. the blood of Jesus erase it. Amen. Any evil record concerning you in the spirit, let oh, the blood yes. of Jesus erase it. Amen. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Say any record. Any record. Regarding my name. Regarding my name. That has evil in it. That has evil in, in it. In the spirit. In the spirit. The blood of Jesus erases it. The blood of Jesus any erases evil it record. now. Any evil record. Concerning me. Concerning in me. In the water anywhere. In the water the blood anywhere. Of Jesus erases the it. The blood of Jesus erases it. Any record concerning me, concerning me, in my blood, in my any life, any evil record, any evil any record, any generation of cancer, any generation of cancer, in my blood, in, in my lineage, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I revoke it, I revoke it, I arrest it, and the blood of Jesus, open your mouth, fire prayer, la crosse, ba 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 ba, soto ro ro ro, se, il repete de ba 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 ba, ma reso ko ro ko si, da la ba ba ka, il repete de de la bradia, la soto ro 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 si. Every 
Jesus, lift up your hand and begin to worship the Lord because it is a race. The Lord has done it. The Lord has done it. It is done. It is done. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Father. Thank you for every record, evil record tonight. It is a race. It is a race today. 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 In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father. We worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the release. 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 